The Beagles are amazing. There's no way that um, Snoop Dogg, by standing there, is going to convince and looking at the Beagle, and the Beagle looks at Snoop Dogg, that he's going to convince him that he doesn't have drugs. You guys, the way it works is that the dog is not fed until it finds the drugs. That's how it works, right? <laughs> Hey friends! I'm trying to say friends instead of guys because I like that better. Hey friends! I'm Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training up here in Boston and today we have a very ex <laughs> a very exciting episode for you. It is um, something that uh, my, my producer Frank dug up, um, which is a video of Joe Rogan and Snoop Dogg talking about dogs. I hope you enjoyed this video and my reaction, my natural reaction to what is going on. So. Enjoy the video. Here we go. If you have a good dog, though, a good connection with your dog, I think everybody has a telepathic connection with their dog. You you probably especially love dogs, and they can they can sense that right away. Mm -hmm. Just like you can sense a person who's a loving person right away. Right. Dogs can sense that, too. And you're obviously a, a loving a dog person. You love that dog. I can man, tell. Man, I, I go up to the meanest, toughest dogs, Joe. Yeah. And I break them. I go up to the meanest, toughest jaw dogs, Joe and I break them. Now you have to be careful. I know he's not a dog professional, but um, you have to be careful with language like that. And I know Snoop Dogg is, you know, trying to be tough, you know, when he says something like that. Um, but I never break a dog. I never break a dog. It's never my goal to break, break a dog. I don't want broken dogs. I want healthy, strong-willed, strong dogs. Um, he's an entertainer. He's not a dog trainer. Um, so, like, a lot of times people will make comments about dogs who just haven't done a lot of thinking about dogs. And his name is Snoop Doggy Dog, so people associate him with dogs. But I'm not sure he put any, like, real thought into dogs. I'm not... We'll see what he said. Yeah, let's continue with this in one second. Like, that's my thing, to break a dog. Like, he... He's he's mean. He doesn't. I'm I'm not the whisperer. What his name is? Caesar, the little dog whisperer. I ain't him. I'm like a different version of that. Like, it could be a real mean, tough dog, and I'd be like, let me go talk to him. And I walk him back in the living room. Sit. He sit down. He's never sat like that before. <laughs> I know. Well, what did you do to him? Don't worry about all that. <laughs> all right. So um, I've worked with some uh, aggressive dogs in the past and go to the back of the living room and go sit and the dog sit. Yeah, some of the dogs that I've worked with in the past and some of my friends have worked with in the past, you do that to them and they will um, disembowel you <laughs> in the living room. They will. I don't care who you are. Um, another thing he said, um, the little dog whisper, whisper Caesar Milan. Um, Caesar Milan, while he's not like everybody doesn't love Caesar or whatever, he does do some very good work with dogs. I respect Caesar a lot because of his ability to read the dog's intentions and to get out in front of him. You know, Caesar is a lot of the times right. As soon as he, yeah, he's made mistakes. I've seen videos of Caesar making a lot of mistakes and this and that. But a lot of the times he's right and he's fast. You know, he, he gets out right in front. He knows what the dog is intended to do and he does something. But he's not yelling sit at the dog. You don't see Caesar or anybody who's really a dog professional walk in with an aggressive dog, a truly aggressive dog, and yell in their face sit and expect the dog not to like rip their stomach open. Um, it's a, uh, yeah. Don't follow the advice that you're seeing on Joe Rogan with Snoop Dogg, um, dog, Snoop Doggy Dog. Don't follow that advice. Please do not. Um, that's my best advice as a professional dog trainer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been pretty good with dogs, but some dogs are just, you can't take a chance with them. The big ones. Yeah, there's like, not even some of the big ones. Like there's some medium-sized ones that are real sketchy. If they're not trained right, like Belgian Malinois. Oh, yeah. I don't fuck that's with not them. a big dog. No, nah, I'm talking about American dog. All that European shit, I don't do all that. Those are the, they're, they call them meat missiles. Yeah, you got to talk to them <laughs> in a different language. I don't speak that shit. And you see those things, you're like, you're basically a wolf. I'm skipping over a lot of things that I disagree with right here. I'm just going to let this pass. 
Um, these guys are not canine professionals. Joe Rogan show is entertaining. I'm entertained by this, by the way. I am entertained. I know I'm like, oh, that's crazy. But um, I'm entertained by this. So it's an entertaining show. But um, yeah, I'm skipping past a lot of stuff. Um, you have to speak to them in a different language. No, nope, no, you don't. You can speak a dog to a dog in English. You can speak to a dog in Spanish. The dog is hardly listening to your words anyway. They're, they're, they are keying in to your intentions. They're watching your body language. You know, that's what they're doing. Um, so more than the words. Yes, you could train a dog. Like my dog, I could tell her, um, beg, and I could have my hands behind my back, and I could just look down and say, beg, and, and she will get up and she will do her, her beg trick. Um, but it's taken me a long time to teach her how to do that, to respond to the word alone. And I had to make it as an intention for me to get her to respond to the word alone. What she was responding to was my hand coming up and I had to slowly fade that out to get her to respond to just the word. Um, so the language, the human language that you use when you're speaking to a dog really doesn't matter that much, in my opinion. It doesn't matter at all, I'll tell you the truth, in my opinion. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to use words. I could have, instead of saying beg, I could have said, ah, 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 and she could have, I could have taught her to do it with that sound or click, click, clack. You know, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's a cue that always precedes her doing the behavior. Okay, back to it. Exactly. That's basically a little wolf. Right. And, and they use them for uh, <clears throat> service, duty. They're, they're, they're always used overseas. That's the, that's the dog of choice. Those motherfuckers can walk on tight ropes. They're talking about the Belgian Melanois here. And the Belgian Melanois is, yeah, they're pretty much right. Um, they like to bite. They're military dogs. They're army dogs. Um, they're not the first breed that humans have used um, for the military. I know in World War II, um, they were using Dobermans in the military, right? Um, before that, the Mastiff, I think, were Roman. The Roman Empire bred those dogs as war dogs, you know? So it's not something new. Um, our war dogs look like Melanois, and that's really cool. I love the breed a lot. They do like to bite. We see them in movies. Um, Unless you are a serious dog person, you probably shouldn't get a Melanois, even although they look really cool in movies and they're super smart. Oh, a side note, all dogs are super smart. They are. They might not want to do what you ask them to do, but that doesn't mean that they're not smart. They know what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, moving on. Here we go. Man. Have you ever seen that, Snoop? No, I haven't. They walk tight ropes. For real? Yeah, for real. Yeah, they have like two tight ropes, and the dog puts one paw on each one, and he walks on this tight rope. They go over obstacle courses. They can jump like 20 feet in the air. They're like missiles. You know what my mission was when I used to go overseas? <clears throat> was to break the Look at this. <laughs> Poor Snoop can't say nothing. He's ignoring Snoop. Like, he's like, he's, Snoop is trying to say something. He's like, look at this. <laughs> he just completely ignores Snoop. You know what my mission was when I used to go overseas? <clears throat> was to break the mother. Look at this. Watch this video. Look at this fucking dog. This is how smart they are. Look at this obstacle course this dog's running. Watch this. Okay, so um, the dog that they're showing in this clip right here is um, Omar Von Muller's, one of his dogs named Monkey. And Omar is um, one of the best dog trainers I've ever seen, straight up. I have not seen a dog trainer that's quite like him. Um, he does do online lessons. And if you get a chance, definitely uh, take lessons from him. I mean, he's great. I mean, he has mutts, he has all sorts of dogs and they do things that you would not believe. But I mean, the breed of the dog, yeah, the Melanois can do these things clearly because he's doing it. But just because it's a Melanois doesn't mean that your Melanois can do those things because it can't, right? Um, Omar's Melanois can do that, um, but Omar has a mutt that can do that as well. I'm sure of it, uh, all the things that you're seeing here. They're a great breed, don't get me wrong, but, um, but Omar to me is way greater. That's the end of that. That's all right. This is crazy. This is how smart they are and how driven they are. This dog has a course to run. He knows the course. He's walking on ropes. 
hopping from object to object. The fact that a dog can be trained to do this and follow these instructions this clearly, like he knows exactly where to go and he's doing all this crazy shit. Like, look, he's on a fucking tightrope again. Yeah, Omar is an amazing trainer. Um, he has a, first of all, he's been on like America Got Talent and all that. Um, he's a well-known trainer. Dog trainers know Omar and watch him closely um, because he's, Phenomenal. Um, he has a video, like this stuff is cool, but he has a video of a dog, of multiple dogs, more than one dog, getting on scooters, going downhill. You know those like razor things where it's like you stand on it and then you pedal with one foot, going downhill really fast, zigzagging between. There's a bunch of stuff like that. So like this is amazing, but to me that is even more amazing. Um, but he does a lot of amazing things with dogs. He does. I have to give him the props on that. He is the best. Come on, go, go, hurry up. Come on, go. The fact that you could teach a dog to do this, like that is not a normal yes. dog. That, that dog must Turn. have immense problem-solving drive, go. like prey drive. And that's shit. what makes a good hunter. That's why they're so scary. Yes. Yeah, he can go get a rat. Exactly, a or a person. Yes. On, that dog will go get a person. This nigga can't walk no ladder. Come yeah, on, he's walking come up a ladder on, and going down a slide. Come on, cuz. <laughs> yes. Come on, cut on the roof. He's on the roof. Yes. And he went up there to get the ball. That's oh, amazing. That's, so that's amazing. And for his reward, that's he gets a ball. Wow. Dude, that's... That's see, what she said. She wanted some balls for her reward. You know what's interesting? It's like, that's cool to watch. <laughs> I like the way Joe Rogan just like ignored Snoop's uh, joke. But um, yeah, for a ball. Um, the dog, a dog that's self motivated <laughs> So there are very few dogs out there that are completely self-motivated. And um, I'm not even sure if monkeys reach that level yet. And there's very few people out there that are completely self-motivated. Most people need their boss to walk around and say, hey, you're doing your job? Hey, you're doing your job over and over and over again. Um, so it is really rare. It is really rare to come across um, a self-motivated animal. The thing is when you practice with a dog that behaviors like this, they become naturally by themselves rewarding. You know, a dog that's running around, climbing over stuff, running through tunnels, the, just the running and the movement by itself is rewarding to the dog. They're movement machines, you know, um, so they don't need much. Not only that, the hours that he played fetch with that dog, I'm not sure how many hours they were, but I'm sure he played a lot. So there's a lot of association. If the dog gets the ball for five seconds, there's a, there's a world of association behind those five seconds. He didn't just drop the ball on the ground. Like, yeah, yeah, you did all that stuff. Here's the ball for the, no. Nope, that's not how it works. So hope that's helpful for you aspiring dog trainers out there. It's cool to watch a dog that can do that. It's amazing. That's but why does, why does a dog have that kind of problem-solving ability? Why? To kill things. Right. right. That's why. That's right. That's why it's so good right. at that. It's right. why it's also so hard to control. They want to kill find things. Go find him. Go yeah, find him. Exactly. They just want to hunt. Uh, You're going to get found with that motherfucker looking for you. <sighs> That's not a big dog either. That's kind of a scary animal because it's like a 60-pound thing that will take out men. It look like a German Shepherd, damn it. They look similar, but right. they're smaller. They're actually, well, I don't know for the most part. You know, I'm, when, not, I'm not a Belgian Malinois expert, but I believe they're smaller. Let me tell you what my mission was. Look at like. this, Snoop. Look at this. Look at this dog. Oh, he got too much. Look at that. Look at that. How, look how fucking high he jumps. So, Malinois, um, I think the reason why a lot of, like, they're so useful to the military is because of their athleticism. Um, to tell you the truth, a Malinois is scary, but. Um, a Rottweiler to me is way more scary than a Melanois. <laughs> All right, I would I would rather see a Melanois any day of the week than a Rottweiler. Um, like a healthy, well-fed, two and a half year old Rottweiler who's exercised and taken care of well. That dog to me on flat ground, um, that's the dog that I would rather not see. Personally, that's me. But Melanois are, are, they're tough. They're pretty cool. But they're only 60 pounds. A Rottweiler is, is a lot stronger of an animal, in my opinion. 
Look at that with its mouth open. Why can it do that? It can do that in, in place of killing things. Right. Because it needs, it needs stimulation, like wow. hunt-type stimulation. Whew. It needs something to initiate that prey drive over and over again. So if you can get it to chase a ball or run or grab a walk across a tightrope, it'll do that. But really wants to do is it's kill. kill shit. Right. Well, let's go kill shit. That's, that's a little a, wolf. That's a pacifier right yeah. now. That's a fucking wolf. It's not a wolf. For the most part, will, wolves are not aggressive. Wolves don't want to bite you. For the most part, they don't. They want to leave you alone. They want to stay far away from human beings. That's what wolves want to do. The wolf is not, like you're not going to train a wolf to go and bite somebody in most cases. In most cases, that's not the case. Um, they want to be left alone. Um, once again, when you get people talking about dogs and wolves and animals, when they haven't put like the, the time in thinking about it or checking out what people know about the animal, you get comments like that. No, a Malinois is a dog that's bred to do the things that it does. Yes, it is, a lot of it comes from hunting drive, but even beyond that, it is bred to be used as a military weapon. That's what the Malinois was bred to do. Right. Um, it is not like a wolf, which was which was um, evolved through natural selection in order to be able to survive in the wild. It's a different thing. You know, a Malinois, when it's trained, it will gladly bite you. A wolf. It would rather leave you alone It'd rather run the other way, It'd rather see you like now nah, I'm out. <laughs> you know, um, because they're wild animals. And uh, yeah, that's just ignorance. And it not only is it ignorance, but it also shows, it also feeds into that myth. And that's why wolves have been extinct, because people think things like this about wolves. And, it, and it's, um, that's why they go extinct. That's why people hunt them and do all that stuff to them, because they think that they're out there trying to get them. And they're not. For the most part, they're not. Um, they want to be left alone by humans. Melanois wants to bite a human when it's trained to do that. They also want to cuddle on the couch if that's the kind of upbringing that you bring them, that you give them. But they'll probably bite you while they're cuddling on the couch. They probably will. <laughs> so, <laughs> seriously, they will. Um, all right, that's the whole story. Damn. damn, damn, damn. Look, my mission back in the days when I used to go overseas was to break that motherfucking beagle. Cause that beagle used to be waiting on us when we come through the airport. We smell like that good dope. Oh. And that motherfucker come stand right next to a motherfucker. When he stand next to you, they call you out the line and run through all your bags. So I had to figure out how to break this motherfucker. I took a little class on beagles. <laughs> so next time I went overseas, little motherfucker pulled up on me. And he looked at me and he was like, and I gave him a little signal. He said, no, not him. And he went still next to another motherfucker. And that was a beautiful thing, and I learned how to break the beagle. Y'all hit me up if y'all want to learn how to break that beagle when y'all go overseas. Because that motherfucker's ferocious. He going to smell some old dope on you. He's going to take you in that back room, man, that little bitty black dog. Watch out now. Just like how Melanois are trained to jump through moving car windows and bite the driver in the throat, um, a beagle is trained can be trained to smell one bed bug larvae and find it be like there's a bed bug there you know um uh, beagles are amazing there's no way that um snoop dog by standing there is going to convince and looking at the beagle and the beagle looks at snoop dog that he's going to convince him that he doesn't have drugs you guys the way it works is that the dog is not fed until it finds the drugs that's how it works right <laughs> beagles love food and they, they have a great nose. They can smell the, they don't feed the dog until it finds the drugs. And you know what happens? If you, if nobody has drugs for a whole eight hour shift and um, the beagle doesn't find drugs because nobody has drugs, you know what they do? They plant drugs in a bag somewhere and they walk the beagle around and the beagle finds the drugs and then it gets fed. Um, so, so uh, no, no. How do you, <clears throat> how do you get a beagle not to alert on you? You drop a whole bunch of bacon on the ground. That's how you get a beagle not to alert on you. And I'm not sure if that'll even work. That's my guess. Just go in there and sprinkle bacon everywhere. All right? Um, that's the best thing that you can do. Other than that, I mean, a vacuum-sealed pack, a vacuum-sealed thing um, inside of a bottle of lotion 
a vacuum sealed tube inside of a bottle of lotion, which is also vacuum sealed, maybe you might get away with a beagle not smelling the weed in that. But the beagle is going to smell the weed and the beagle is going to tell on you. I don't care which class you took. I don't care how rich and famous you are. Um, the beagle, that's how it makes us, that's how it makes us a meal, man. It, it, if you like the beagle not to um, alert on you, please contact Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> if you like what you see here and you'd like to see more of this definitely subscribe to our channel you can hit the subscription button there and it'll probably bring up a bell that you can hit too and it will annoy you every single time that we put out a video it might not be annoying it'll just pop up on your phone and say hey there's an argos video out if you would like to learn more about Argos dog training, then definitely check out the description below where you will find links to our other social media outlets. If you would like to learn more about Argos dog training, you could also check out my website, argostraining.com. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog.